Hello and welcome. The news are out. Ukraine is receiving American cluster munitions. In this video, we are going to talk about what is that? How do they work? How do cluster munitions work? And why do you find messages in the media that uh, the US are now giving Ukraine some ostracized or some controversial munitions? Munitions, we are going to talk about that and how much they are going to help Ukraine. This is one of the numerous videos about cluster munitions. Cluster munition is basically a base bomb that is being dropped, which then releases a number of sub munitions, like smaller bombs that are spreading out. We see a Russian air attack here in Syria, and this here should have been one bomb, it might have been two, but this was not, you saw probably a hundred small explosions. This was not one uh, salvo of a hundred small bombs. It was actually one, maybe two that were dropped by a Russian plane that opened them up. You can see how it works in this example here. You see that the top cap is like being pushed away and then it opens up and all of this are small munitions that are being spread out and then going to explode once they reach the ground. But obviously like a small cloud, like a shotgun, uh, uh, cloud of shotgun shells it's reaching the ground this is how it looks on the ground when the the um when on the incoming side basically this is from stepanakert in nagorno karabakh in the second nagorno karabakh war where azerbaijan used it onto the city and you see a number of small explosions here and here we have another example from kharkiv where the russians used it at the beginning of the war to um, shell as well uh, russia has used it since the beginning of the war i have not seen proof that ukraine did it but i assume they did if they had some in storage uh, but they likely ran out that's why they ask for additional ones so first of all um, what is going to be delivered the most likely uh, munition that the US will will hand over are the M864 uh, grenades, which we can see here. They are 155 millimeters. So for the, the big standard caliber for NATO, that can be shot with the M777, the German Panzer Bits 2000, the Krab, for instance, all those 155 uh, millimeter caliber, César, the French, etc., all of them. And they are base bleed units. And this is a nice example to explain what that is. Basically, a shell in the air, if it's made like this, has turbulences behind the shell. And those turbulences suck in air and thus slow down the grenade, which reduces its range. You can easily uh, fight this by adding a base burner unit at the end. That is ignited with the shooting of the shell and then creates gas. And that gas is less meant to propel it like a rocket, but it's more to fill the area, the, the area that is opened with the shell crossing it. And instead of having the air around it being sucked in and slowing it down, you would simply fill the space with the gas produced by the shell itself, and that extends its range. The M864 is releasing 72 submunitions of the type M42 and M46, which we can see here. They look like this, and this ribbon stabilizer is making sure that they drop on the ground more or less with this side downwards. The area that is being covered by this is fairly big. Uh, the number is, I found, is like 22,000 square meters. That's two hectares. I think that should be around six acres. I'm not completely sure, though. Um, Imperial system is unfortunately not my specialty, but it's spreading out and there. It, we can compare it uh, to make it simple with a shotgun. If you shoot birdshot, you shot a high number of small pellets, but in this regard, not only does it create a cloud and a wide spread, but every one of those shells, every one of those pellets would then also explode on the ground, which allows you to saturate a certain area and use, uh, use it against that. The M M42 and M46 have both anti-material effectiveness as well as anti-personnel, so lighter vehicles can easily be destroyed by that, as well as 
well as troop concentration. If they are being hit, if a, a unit on the march is being hit by that, that's absolutely devastating. But even entrenchments can be effectively addressed by this. As you can imagine, 72 submunitions make it much more likely that you manage to have a few hit inside of the trenches than with one single grenade. So generally, it's basically just making sure that a wider area is being hit with less individual explosives. Obviously, at every single point of impact, the effect is lower than if you have a single big shell, but you can spread it out. And unless you have a very hardened target that you need to hit specifically, it increases uh, the effectiveness massively. For the Ukrainians, this will mean that in case they see the Russians attack, they can destroy their columns. In case the Russians have entrenchments, they can shell them with that and try to suppress them or take out as many defenders as possible. The problem why this is ostracized or why this is controversial is that it has a fairly high dot quota, a fairly high number of dots. I found about the M864 that the dots are roughly 6%. That would mean in every, in every single grenade of the 72 submunitions, four would lie around and not explode. They look more or less like this. Obviously, this one is damaged, but they look like this. And as you can see, they are not shiny. They aren't easy to identify. And this might be mistaken by a kit that it's something to swing around its head or something. So you mine effectively, you mine an area. Every single grenade will leave roughly four, four of those submunitions as a mine in behind. The problem there is not only is this an issue, but it's also not like regular mining with AT and AP mines, so anti-tank, anti-personnel, because civilized militaries make maps. They they have records where exactly they laid mines to be able to, to clear the minefields later, to make sure no mines are left behind once they secure the area. And as part of peace treaties, usually you hand over your mine maps to the other. So he can, he it's usually one of the conditions. So the other side can clear the minefields by exactly knowing where the mines were left. Here, you don't have those maps. The, this is basically, you shoot it towards the enemy and there is not immediately a map that we know exactly 10 meters in this direction, 50 in this. This is going to be the minefield. Obviously, you can still keep some records, but they are far more rough and the concentration of mines is far lower while you don't even know how many you left there. A good a good record keeping for mine laying would also say we left 760 AP mines and 60 AT mines in that field. So once you cleared it, you can see, okay, we clearly are still missing two AT mines. We need to search it again. Here, nobody knows. A single shell might have a dot rate of 10%. The next one might have one of 0%. There is simply no knowledge where it is. And while you can roughly record where the dots are supposed to be, you still will have to find it and there is still some risk remaining. That led a lot of nations to, to sign the convention uh, on cluster munitions, as you can see here. But this is one of the examples where I like to mention those conventions are mostly signed by nations that don't expect they have ever have to use a weapon. Uh, usually conventions like this, it's the same with anti-personnel mines. They are mostly signed by nations that don't, in, don't expect to go to war anyways. The big exceptions here are obviously Great Britain and France who have still signed it, despite, despite both of them regularly being involved in combat, regularly being in, involved in wars, they still have signed it. But you, as we can see, the United States haven't signed it, Russia hasn't signed it, China hasn't signed it, Ukraine also hasn't signed it, or Poland, for instance, has also not signed it. So in this regard, we see that the the it's perfectly legal to deliver them, but the risk is the dot rate, and that's why it's being seen as controversial. That's already it for now. A short summary. What does that mean? Uh, we should probably also say that this will not be a game changer for Ukraine. This is not what, what is going to win the war for Ukraine. It will help them. It will be a useful addition. It will, And the other thing would be that it increases the effectiveness of a single uh, single piece of artillery. You can do have the same effect of uh, obliterating anything in, in uh, the area of four football fields, but you might need a full battery of artillery for that, whereas here you can do it with one single piece of artillery and one single shell. So it will help Ukraine, it will increase the effectiveness of its artillery, but it in, it in itself will not 
make sure that it will not win the war for Ukraine. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section. What do you think about this? How much will it help Ukraine? Or do you think it's wrong or right to sign a treaty like this that bans effective munitions like this in context of a real war? Leave your comment in the comment section what you think about this. And if you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. This, cha this channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. So if you like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already supporting this channel. That's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.